Happy Sabbath, church. Before we go into the word today, I'd just like us to sing one verse and the chorus of the well-known hymn, Sweet Hour of Prayer. The reason why I ask for us to sing this, this song before we get into the word is that we pray that the Lord can do something today for our young people that can bring them closer to Jesus Christ. And I need you guys to realize that the burden is not on my shoulder. The burden and the weight of this serious responsibility is not on my shoulder in the sense that the power lies with me for these young people to come to Christ. I need you guys to know that the power does not lie with me for the young people to be more like Jesus. But I believe that the power is in the prayer. So I need you guys to pray that the Lord will do something today that will lead the young people closer to Jesus Christ. The old song says, Sweet Hour of Prayer. If you know this song, you can sing very, very softly and quietly while praying that something takes place today. Sweet Hour of Prayer. Nobody knows the song, church? God in heaven at this time we need you to speak to us to give us what we need according to your word Lord I believe that I know to some degree what the devil is doing to our young people. The truth be told, Lord, many of us in the church have no clue. Many of us, Lord, are fast asleep on the borders of eternity. And Lord, I read in the Bible that when a storm is on its way, The devil always tries to lure us to sleep. But today, Lord, I'm asking you to wake us up through your word. I'm asking you, Lord, to save the young people, Lord. I've learned that we seldom find those who are willing to fight for the young people. And Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, to give me strength today to speak a word to the young people. I'm asking you, Lord, to give me a word, Lord, to speak to someone here today that is seeking to get to know you. I'm asking you, Lord, to move in the name of Jesus. For far too long, we've been buffeted by the devil. And today, Lord, we intend through the word to expose him and to bring souls to Christ. So, Lord, please, Lord, cover me 
and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me that boldness that's in the Bible. I'm asking you, Lord, do for me what I can't do for myself and do for this congregation what they can't do for themselves. Lord, I wait on your miracles in the name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Amen. First things first, church, I'd like to say that it's very good to be here. And I'd like to give thanks to my wife for being with me today. She's right there to the right, your left, Chantel Fuller. She can give a wave, a, a bigger wave. And I want to just be, be plain and straightforward today that I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my wife. And I don't expect you guys to understand that, so I need to explain that. We know that what I'm trying to say, it's because of God why I'm here, amen? But God uses people, amen? And I'm just letting you guys know that today, even though I'm a preacher in the church, I've been baptized, I'm I'm born in the church, young people don't take for granted that I'm just here by chance. The Lord has united me with someone that I know for a fact, if it wasn't for them, I would not be here today. I would like to also give thanks to my good friend Michael Danzi, who's to my right, to your left also. Give him a wave, Mike. Don't be shy now, Michael. You're there preaching up in the place and you're getting shy on me now. The reason why I'm doing this is because I need to let you guys know that there are a few people in my life that pray for me like nobody's business. Are you guys hearing me today? They pray for me. And they make sure that I'm in the way. They make sure that I'm doing the right thing if I'm down. What do they do, church? They help me up. And I'm making it plain here today for a reason. The devil has done something to our church that continues to blow my mind. And I'm going to expose it today, whether we like it or not. Are you guys hearing me today? At the end of the day, the church that you are in right now, whether you like it or not, if I don't like Nike or or, or sports clothing, I don't go to the, the sports shop and get angry. Are you guys hearing me? If I don't like sports stuff and I choose to go to the sports shop and I start throwing things down and I start and I start acting very different and I start saying I don't like sports stuff. Why are you buying you know why are you buying these sports gears? The point is this, if I don't like the sports stuff, what am I doing there? Are you guys catching me? If I'm not willing to to adapt to to, to the love of sport, why do I keep on going to the sports place, you know, acting like I don't like the sport? And I'm saying today that right now, where we are as a church is like this. I'm being honest with you. My younger siblings and my younger family members and my friends that are younger than me, who are teenagers, they tell me today that they don't want to be in church. They say to me that church is is, is, is literally always going over their head. They say to me that I want to get involved, but I just can't get involved. They say to me that I want to do something and I want to be, you know, active for Christ, but, but church is just a place where I go and I sit down and I hear the sermon, I hear the music and I go home. And I'm breaking it down. That there's many of us that come to church. Many of us come to church, the place where Christ should be. Many of us, we have, dev- we have devoted our lives to telling our managers, I can't work on Saturday because I go to church. But our church experience has no power. Our church experience has nothing more than what we do in the service. And if there's young people looking onto adults that don't really show that God is real, then they are going to leave the church, not because of God, but because of people that claim to know God. If I am a young person and I want to be like Jesus, but all the time I am around people that they don't look like they know Jesus. They don't look, okay, they don't seem like they're excited about Jesus. Every single adult, let's be honest with me, you want the young people to be on fire for Jesus, amen? Okay, if you want them to be on fire for Jesus, the best way to show young people about Jesus is for you to be on fire. Until you're on fire, 
until you are showing that you're Christian, you are a bad witness to young people. You are showing young people that going to church is the be all and end all, even though I don't smile, even though I don't shout for joy, even though I don't witness, I don't evangelize, I don't really love. Okay, there's someone in church that I don't talk to. I'm gossiping about so and so, I don't even like this person, and then we're showing our young children that this is God. Our young children are looking on because in the early ages, scientists tell us, don't miss this now, scientists tell us that from one to like seven, and then from seven to like 14, young people are very inquisitive. They're very alert and they're watching everything. They're watching everything. And I'm building my premise so I can preach this message from the get-go. I left the church. I left the church. But I didn't want my parents to look bad. So what I did is I compromised and said to the devil, I can give, do you mind if I give God my Saturday body? You you guys ain't hearing me, man. I said to God, sorry to the devil, do you mind if I just go to church on Saturday? But I promise you, I'll be with you from Sunday to Friday, but allow me to be with God on Saturday. Okay, I'm the manager of a company, and you guys are my employees. You guys want holiday leave. Why won't I mind you taking holiday leave? It's not rocket science. You're, 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 you're in your chair and you've taken holiday leave. So by default, you know the answer. Anyone? Because you're doing, okay, I'm the manager, you want to take holiday leave. Why do I always say, okay, feel free? Say that loud, don't be shy, sister. Because I'll come back. The manager doesn't mind you going away because you're going to come back. But the minute you say to that manager, you're the number one sales representative. And you're saying to the manager, there's another company I'm looking to leave. He's going to try and persuade you to stay. But if you just say to the manager, I'm going to the Grand Canary, I'll be back. He will actually pay you while you're on holiday. I'm breaking it down in my premise. Young people and adults, listen to me because you cannot fool Jesus. You fooled many people, but I read the Bible and then I woke up and said, wow, we are lying to ourselves. The reason why we're excited about church is because going to church on one day, it's not that much of a sacrifice. It's easy to look your part and it's easy to pray and preach and evangelize and do a crusade because that takes place on Saturday. Guess what? It's your free day. That's your free day. And then young people, we're going to teach them to sacrifice all to Jesus, surrender all, be like Jesus, give Jesus everything. But we are only giving Christ Saturday. I'm breaking it down that many of us, by default, do you know that we are, okay, please don't, don't get mad at me. I'm being, don't, 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 not, don't allow this to shut your ears. But I'm going to say it anyway. Many of us are employed by the enemy of souls. You might not like it, but I have, to be, I have to be honest with you today. Why would I see that your road is not the biblical road and say, mm, you're a Christian, but you got to grow. No, there's one side and there's another side. Simple. There's no two sides. If you keep on telling me that my clothes is nice when it's not nice, you're not a good friend. You're making it worse. Let me know that my clothes needs a revamp. Amen? And I'm letting you guys know we are employed, many of us, by the devil. Can I tell you why? It's very simple. Let's break this down. Because the reason why is because he doesn't mind us coming to church because he knows we're only on holiday leave. Guys, let that sink. When are you excited about evangelism? When are you excited about saving souls? On Saturday. When are you excited about salvation? On Saturday. Uh, If the cap fits, then wear it. If it's not you, don't say, well, it's not me. Amen. It's not you. Amen, church? But the fact of the matter is this. Our young people are in a place where we are being turned off God because of the people of God. 
Many of us don't want to come to church no more. And for far too long, we say to the young people, it's your problem. How the adults are and how we are, if you don't like it, then you should be strong yourself. The Bible don't teach that. The Bible says, if any one of us discourage any one of these little ones, it's better for you to get a big rock and wrap that around a rope, wrap it around your neck and throw it over London Bridge. Was that my word or the Bible? That's the Bible, church. Jesus is saying, do not play with my young children. Do not play around with that. I'm trying to save them, and then, and, then, and then you're trying to fight my trying to save them. And I need to go into the Bible, because we're not going to try and beat around the bush today. There's only one thing that can cause us to unite as a family. There's only one thing that can really bring our young people back to being with Jesus. There's only one thing that's got the power to literally go to the devil's kingdom and, and bomb the devil's kingdom and it's not just Bible doctrine. It's not evangelistic crusades. It's not, it's not even just a big smile or how you're doing. But let's go to Romans 5. I'm going to let you know today, why am I still here, young people? Ask the question, young people. Why am I still here? Why am I still here? What is the driving force that despite my trials and despite my mess and despite what I've been through, because I've done stuff that are not good. I'm not ashamed to say that because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Don't miss that now. The reason why I'm not ashamed of my past is because the gospel handled my past. And because the gospel handled my past, now I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Despite what people do or say to me, what that does, it affects me, but why is it that I will brush that off my shoulder and still choose to stay with Christ? Romans 5 is a serious chapter for me in the Bible. It brings out a lot of juice for me, but we're going to try and make it very simple. Romans 5 breaks this down. It says this. Please don't miss this. In verse 1 it says this, Therefore being justified by faith, we have what church? With who church? Through who? Verse 2 says, By whom also we have what? So we have access by what? Into who? Or into what? Into this grace. Now who gives us grace? How do we get access to that grace? Talk to me. Let's, 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 young people, let's get this. Who has the grace? How are we saved? By grace we are saved. By faith, that's right. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2. So young people, there is grace and we need to get access to what? The grace. How do we get access to grace? By faith, that's right. So we have access through faith to this grace. Don't miss this now, please. This is what it says. It says this. Wherein we do what? Do we fall or do we stand? Wherein we are able to stand. Wherein we are able to stand. Did it just end their church? What did it say? And rejoice in hope of the glory of who? Of God. And not only so, I like Paul. Paul is giving us these nice bombs and he's like this. It doesn't end there. Paul is saying, guess what church? You're excited, right? We're justified by faith. There's grace. We can't reach it. But God gives you faith so that you can now access the grace. And when you've accessed the grace, you're able to stand in that grace. Amen, church? But guess what? It don't end there. It doesn't finish there. It says this. And not only so, but we glory in also trib Guys. No. Church. Okay. If the devil is a smart devil, all he has to do is this. I know grace is there, but guess what? They need faith to access the grace. Are you guys with me? I know that grace is there, but the devil's like this. 
demons, demons, demons. How can we prevent the young people and the church from getting to the grace? Because when they get to the grace, they can only get there by faith. And if they have faith, they're in the grace. And if they're in the grace, they're standing firm. And if they're standing firm, they can only stand firm on the word. Don't miss that. So if you're standing firm, the devil can't penetrate you. The enemy of souls, young people, is simply trying to prevent you from accessing grace through faith. So what he does is this. He he literally says, I'm going to do everything so that you do not fully come to the belief that Christ saved your life, that he died for you, and you're not allowing that. The devil's like, I can't allow you to let that sink. The devil cannot allow that thought to resonate in your mind. The moment you start to resonate of the love of Jesus, the moment you start to fathom that God in heaven died for me, you're going to start to think now, wow, why would such a God die for me? But let's not allow the preacher to do the talking. Let's see what the word says. Is that okay, church? Let's see what the word says. So where we are right now is this. The devil knows if we have access to grace by faith, then we are going to stand firm in the grace, standing firm, and then the Bible breaks it down. When the tribulations come, we will also rejoice also. The devil brings tribulation to the church. The devil brings tribulation to the young people, and the reason why we are easily plummeted, the reason why we easily get thrown down, is because we do not have the faith to accept the grace of God. We do not believe. We don't understand the love of Jesus Christ. We think we do. We church. Do you know? We actually come to church miserable and angry and gossiping and, and down and, and, and he shed and then she shed and then and don't miss this. We come to church and we're, we're down in the dumps. And we, okay, we would swear blind that we know Jesus. We would swear blind that Jesus is in my heart. But when tribulations come, the apostle says he rejoiced. He rejoiced. When you have access to grace through faith, when you're standing strong on the word of God, tribulation is not even there to bring you down. Tribulation is there so that you can rejoice in it. But the truth is, church, it's it's an amen. But we are not there. Our young people are leaving the church by the dozen. Our young people are leaving the faith by the tons load. We are a church on the decline. If you did not know, the Adventist church is fast growing down. You might not like it, church, but evangelism this year and last year was below 0%. Come on, guys, think about this. If we are accessing grace by faith and we're standing firm, then why is not our light? Sh- Paul says, our light sheds abroad the gospel in our hearts is shed abroad to everyone else. So if you're saying that I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ, What you're saying is you've reached the point where Jesus is filling you so much to the brim that you can only share him. And if you're not sharing him and you're not excited about him, how do we expect the young people to come to church and be happy that Jesus is Lord? How can we expect young people to love church, to love the place where God said, this is my people, this is my loved ones, But in youth, right now, they might tell you that they want to be here. I don't know these youth, but I am telling you for a fact, because I've been here. When I was their age, the reason why I was here is because there was nothing else really for me to do. If there was something else to do, I would have jumped at the choice. And Jesus is trying to bring us to a point where we're not worshipping him by force, but we're doing it out of love. But what does Paul say? What does Paul say in Romans? This is what Paul says. He says this. He says, And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation, it worketh patience. This is the Christian journey. And then 
Patience, experience, and experience hope. Verse 5 says this, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. My question to you, church, is this. Is the love of God shed abroad in your hearts? Can you say today that the, that the love of God is shed abroad in my heart? If the love of God is in your heart, it can only shed abroad. If the love of God is in your heart, by default, there has to be action. There has to be a work. There has to be a, I must go now and let the world know that God is love. And I'm breaking it down. The church that I've learned, we are so good at evangelizing to strangers, but when it comes down to our own, we don't want to show them that love. That breaks my heart. If a visit, if, if a, okay, if Barack Obama, I keep on saying this, came into these doors, and he said, guys, you know, I'm here from America, I'm going drastic because it's that deep. Do you know that we would change our demeanor to show love for this guy? You don't have to believe me. I'm telling you, it's a fact. Period. Even if you say no, preacher, I'm telling you. It, okay, don't miss this. If a great baptizer, million souls preacher came into here, listen now, young people, and he was preaching for five hours or two hours, we wouldn't let that man say, we, we wouldn't say, hey, man, it's time up. Are you guys hearing me today? If, if Elder Ted Wilson, hello, church. Hello, church came and said, hey guys, I want to take another hour of your time. Ruth say, preach on Elder Ted Wilson. Why? Because he's high up there. He's high here. But we have young people down here. Young people that they make mistakes. Young people, sometimes they mess up. Young people, sometimes they don't want to do things. And I'm breaking it down. God is saying, when you're going to do the big stuff to the big people, God is saying, if you love me, you show all of that, young, sorry, that love to the young people. And I'll say amen for that, church. Because I'm breaking it down that the enemy of souls, do you know, he's prepared a vast opportunity for our youth in the world. Did you guys know that? Do you know how much gangs there are to join outside? Do you know how much boys that are there with money and cars waiting for our young females? Do you know how much gangsters and gunmen that are outside waiting to wrap up your boys? And we're in here Guys, we're in here making it seem like it's not a thing. The young people, the young people ain't coming to church. Let's just pray. Let's just pray for them. And then God forbid, let's just say, off my head, because I've been there. God forbid, young lady, young man, fools in sin. Uh-oh, church. Hello, church. They fall down in, in, in a vow act of unrighteousness. Right? Because remember, we're holy, right? And, and we're righteous. And remember, we said the love of God sheds abroad in our hearts, right? And then, okay, what would cause, what would cause our young people to say, I can't go back there. I can't go back to church. Why can't you go back to church? Because even though they don't say it, even though, they, even though they're smiling, I can see the, I can see the snake through the, through the smile. Are you guys hearing me? I can see, I can see the dismay. I can see so much anger and disappointment. So, 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 okay, so, okay, so, okay, so, okay, don't miss this. Let me just stay where I am in the world. Let me go in the world because the world accept me for who I am. The very place where God's love was supposed to be shed abroad the most is being shed abroad the least. But that's why I have to testify on people. That's why I can't depend on just a youth week of prayer reading because that reading is not me. Does that make sense? That reading, me, me preaching that to you makes no sense. I must let you know why I'm still a Christian. Why I still believe. And what I've been through, and, and, and despite what I've been through, why I'm still here today. And let's read it. Listen very carefully. Paul is breaking down some serious stuff. He says this. 
For when we were yet without strength. Are you guys following me, young people? So you're yet without what? Okay. You have no what? If you have no strength, what are you? You're weak. When you're without strength, in due time. Now what that means is very simple. It means at the right time. It means at the, at the egg, one split second out of sync would have been the wrong time. But what God is saying, when you were without strength, so that means when you was weak, you're trying to be holy, you're trying to be righteous, you're trying to live for Jesus. God is saying, young people, when you were without strength, at the right time, what did Jesus do? Jesus died. Now, don't miss this. If you are planning to murder me, and you're planning to stab me in the back, and you're planning to take me out, and you're gossiping about me, and you're stealing from me, and you're getting angry at my wife, and you're, and you're slashing my car tires, and you're robbing my house, when you're in a problem, am I even going to think about helping you? Talk to me. Am I even going to think about trying to do anything for you? Even more so, I'm probably going to join the attack and take you out. Are you guys hearing me? Talking about the carnal nature? If you're trying to kill my family and I see that there's someone trying to take you out, I'm going to join forces with that somebody and take you out too. But the Bible is trying to teach us another way. God is trying to say, when you were without strength, and don't miss this, that means weakness and sin makes us weak. The word sin, it denotes to death. So don't miss this now. If I'm not strong, I'm weak. And I'm sinning, I'm doing all of this stuff. Who do I sin against? Talk to me. Who do I sin against? Against God. God is saying, when I was doing my mess, when I was doing my ungodly things, when I was doing the rancid things, when I was doing and thinking the things that I can't even speak about, the Bible is saying, Paul is saying, that that was the time, and then it didn't just say that was the time. In the Greek it says, God saw that as the right time to die for you. No, no, guys, you can't miss that. Wouldn't it make sense for God to wait until you stop doing the bad stuff? Wouldn't it make sense for God to say, let me see if me dying for you is worth it? Think about that. Because you're showing no promise. You are actually fighting against God. And God says, it was when you was at your lowest fighting against God, that's when I chose to die for you. That's mind-blowing to me. And the moment, church, we forget this, that's the moment the devil takes over in our spiritual journey. The moment you forget that Christ died for you when you were at your lowest, you're not going to be a true Christian. The reason why we are doing what we're doing today, the reason why we're doing church work, the reason why we're many, many of us are legalistic, the reason why even if we did not believe in Christ, even if we did not believe in the second coming, do you know many of us would still come to church? Did you guys catch that? I believe even if we did not even believe in the last days, even if we didn't believe that things are happening right now in earth's history, I believe we would still keep coming to church because church is a routine for us. But the Bible is saying that when the love of Christ comes into your heart, there's no way you can sit still and not go out and save others. There's no way. And I'm saying, young people, what caused me, what caused me to start doing what I'm doing for Jesus it's the fact that when I was at my lowest doing the worst things that man could even imagine, when everybody was against me, when many family members was against me, when many church members was against me, when many people had wrote me off, when they saw my sin and they said, how can you, Andrew Fuller, do this? How could you go so far? And at that time, I wanted to leave the church. And guess what? I left. And 
I was in the world now and I was working doing things for the devil. I was now doing things that I thought I liked. I was now on the road that looked like it gave me happiness, but deep down it did not make me happy. Those girlfriends did not make me happy. That money that people would work for in a month that I had in one week, it did not make me happy. Didn't make me happy. And it was when I was at my lowest. I was at the point of my life where the the police force was about to make, you know, investigations in things that me and my friends were doing. And I would say, that voice would say, but go back to church, God is love. And I deep down believed that God was love, but I did not see God through people. I'm being honest, young people. I did not see the love that Paul is saying. Paul is saying that the love is shed abroad in God's people's heart. You know, sorry, the love of God is shed abroad in the people of God's heart. And I was saying, I didn't see that. I saw my best friend go to prison, come out two years later, and then when it was announced in church, the whole church was unawares of my friend going to prison. You see, church, that don't shock us anymore, does it? It's okay, right? Why would I know? Why would I be concerned about, 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 about sister so-and-so's son that's left the church and is now in prison? But then when he came out of prison, his mother was discouraged because his, sorry, because her daughter also had a child out of wedlock. Oh, oh now, it's game over now. Now the mother, her friends in church, cut her off. Hello, church. Her friends who used to give Bible study to her and her friends who used to say, let's pray for your sons. As soon as the tribulations hit, as soon as her son and daughter left the church, the actual church friends cut her off. Young people, I'm being honest with you. You're coming to church not because you're looking to receive love from church members. I'm teaching you right now, young people, do not leave God because of people. Trust me. If the church want to treat you bad, let them treat you bad. Are you listening to me, young people? If you feel that no one's on your side, let me tell you that God is on your side. Let me tell you that despite what, the, despite what man can do, God is not sleeping. He's not sleeping. And that's what the Bible is saying. When you have faith in the grace of God, God says, I'll cause you to stand firm because trials are going to come. Tribulations are going to come. And the aim is when the tribulations come that you would be able to rejoice. But because we have not trained our young people and because many of us haven't been taught how to truly have faith in Jesus Christ, when tribulation comes, we naturally do what humans do. And we try to fix things ourselves. That's why when I was in the world, it took a calamity for me to come back. The only way for God to wake me up. Imagine this. God knew it wasn't going to be through no church. See, you guys didn't catch that. God's appointed agency on earth is the church. How has it come so far then that I'm in the world and God can't even use my own church to save me? (laughs) Guys, guys, please don't miss that. How can we sit here knowing that God put you here to save them? And God is like, these guys, I can't even use them no more. I need to go into the world and get some heathens to save my people. You don't believe me? Who got Jonah back on the road to Nineveh? Jonah was on a ship full of pirates, heathens who worshipped other gods. God used heathens to wake up the prophet. Did did you guys catch that? When the church is sleeping, God goes outside to use the stones to cry out. 
And the point is this, young people. Hear it from my story. I was in the world. My friends were about to do something to someone. I'm not going to speak about it because it's not the time or the place for that language or that conversation. But just know, church, something was about to be done to someone that would have seen us in prison for a very long time. And in London City and in Northampton, you can think about the crime. If there's evidence that you were going to do the crime, they'll send you down for the same time. Did you guys hear me? As if you've going to do the crime, period. So imagine now, I'm in a place, young people, I'm going to church week after week. I'm doing stuff week after week. I'm sitting down in church wearing my suit and my shiny suits, but deep down, I'm working for the devil. Deep down, I'm just hiding. I'm just using church as a hiding place from people because I can't afford my, my dear sister to believe I'm of the devil. I can't afford my young children to think that I'm a sinner. So, so guess who taught me to be like that? It was the church that taught me to be like that. The church teaches young people not to be real. The church teaches young people to be going through hell, but just don't say a word. The church is teaching young people, I want to just give up. No, 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 you can't give up. You just sit down and plow along. This is the place where we should be able to be free one another. We should be able to say, Elder, let's talk. I'm struggling with some real stuff, but we ain't going to do that because we're thinking, if I say this to Elder, he might tell Deacon. And then Deacon might tell Pastor. And then lo and behold, it's in the whole conference. The devil is a liar. He has crippled the church. So young people who God wants to use in the last days, that is how he's going to get them to leave. And now I was in the world. So I'm actually proving to you that this is a true fact. It's not my opinion. I'm telling you, your young people, even though they're here today, if they're not here in spirit, they are not here. Period. Don't allow their presence to comfort you. Don't just think, oh, wow, yes, they came today. Hallelujah. That don't mean a thing. If your young people are coming to church, that don't mean a thing. The moment Christ penetrates the heart, you will see and know that, wow, these young people are in love with Jesus. So, my two friends got arrested, church, for doing a crime that they didn't do, but they planned to do it. And I was in year 11 of my school life. In year 11, what do you do? GCSEs. I couldn't do these GCSEs because my friend said to me, listen, Andrew, I got picked up in an area called Streatham. I was going to school and they, and they literally came and arrested me. And then another person that was with me, they wasn't even involved. They got arrested too. So I said, no, no, no. My dad is an elder in the church. My mom is a respected woman in the church. My family is known to be a church family. I dare not put myself in a position where I can be publicly scorned. I need to hide myself. I did not go to school for the whole GCSE period. I could not take my GCSEs. Are you seeing how the devil is, 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 is trying to tear my life from limb to limb? He is just, he's literally caused me to, to do this stuff. And now he's saying, Andrew, I'm going to tear apart your educational. The whole five years of me going to school was a waste in my eyes now. Now I said this. The only way for me to get back in society is by making money. I can't go to college now because I have no grades. And I remember like it was yesterday. My older brother was caught in a situation where he could have lost his life. And I remember standing in a hospital room like it was yesterday. And I said to God for the first time in my whole life, in my whole experience, I said to God, I said, God, you know right now I am on the verge of going to prison. I'm on the verge of losing my brother to death. I said to God, God, I'm at the point now where I don't want just this mamby-pamby church experience. I said, God, I'm begging you to keep me out of that system and save my brother's life. And I said to God, Lord, if you come through for me, I'll work for you. I said, God, I promise you, Lord, if you save my life, I will work for you, Jesus. Two weeks later, I remember they said, my best friend phoned me and said, Fuller, I'm going down for this crime. Church, 
Do you know what he said to me, church? He said they showed us the video on CCTV. Do you know whose face was the only face they saw, clearly? It was my face. I had forgotten to put my hood up while I was doing what I was doing, and my face was all over that camera. And my friend's dad said, isn't that, isn't that fuller, isn't that? And he said, on the street, there is a law code. Are you guys hearing me today? There's a code. If you get caught, you get caught. If I don't get caught, don't say my name. I didn't say to him, don't say my name, but I'm trying to say, in the devil's kingdom, we were willing to die for each other. So you guys even listen to me, man. The Lord was teaching me how to be a Christian. He, guys, please don't miss this. The Lord was teaching me how to be a true Christian, and I was not even in church. Do you know, my friends could tell you, if there was people trying to rob my friends, if there was 10 people and there was one of my friends and they called me, I would go and I would not care about any damage done to me. I wouldn't care about the perils of, 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 of being beaten up. Can I tell you why? Because we were family and we learned, we learned to love together and we learned to do what we were doing as an army, as a team. And it, I didn't see it then, but I see it now. Even though I was in the devil's kingdom, the love of God was still trying to save my life. I was learning these simple principles. Protect your own. Love your brothers. I didn't learn that in the church. The church didn't teach me that. I didn't learn to put my life on the line for my brother. My brother said, Andrew, I'm actually going to go to prison knowing that your face is the one that they want to catch. And he's no Christian? There's young people right now in the devil's kingdom who are willing to go to prison for life. If you come on their, if you come on their ends or their, or their area and you try and come and steal their drugs, do you know that these young guns, 12 year old, 10 year olds, are willing to shoot you down knowing that they're fighting for a cause? But in the church though, in the church though, our young people, are not at the place where we're willing to die for a course. In the world, we're willing to die for a course. In the world, they're willing to fight for their gang. In the world, they're willing to do whatever it takes. And my appeal is so simple. When I came to Christ, I said to Jesus, if you're going to use me, I said, God, I need you to show me a sign. I said, God, you know how much damage I've done to many people around. You know how much lives I've led astray, how much folks I have, they've seen the Christian me, but I've shown them the devil. And now they're discouraged. In, in, in many young people had left the church because of my bad influence. And then it dawned on me just one day. And I sat down in my room, church. And I burst into tears, literally. For the first time, it's like I felt something in my heart. Like a burden to help someone. For the first time, I experienced, God, I was fighting against the Spirit. And at the time when I was at my worst, that was when you chose to die for me. No, 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 young people think about that. You're playing the piano, you're doing the PA system, you're in church. God is saying, that's not the time I chose to die for you. I chose to die for you when you were fully representing the devil. And I sat in my room and I remember like it was yesterday. I was sitting there and I said, God, what kind of love is this? I said, I said God, are you, God, why? I said to God, are you forgetting what I've done, Lord? I said, God, there's someone right now that you died for too and they've left church because of me. Imagine sitting there. God's just saved your brother from death. God has just saved you from prison. 
But now there's young people that's left the church. Now there's young people that haven't received your joy. Now there's youth. Imagine that there's young people that's left the church. And now I'm back. I'm in the church now. But I'm still looking at the young people while I was coming back into church. They were leaving the church. And one person said to me, Fuller, the reason why I gave up is because when I saw you in the world, I said, the influence that Andrew has, he said to me, I said, I want to be like that. I want to have popularity like that. And when I came back to Christ, I found out that he had left the church. And that's when I said, God, are you still going to love me? Imagine that God said, Andrew, yes, I'm still going to love you. God, even though there's females that are in turmoil now because of what I've done to them, God, are you still going to love me? Even though now they feel insecure, God says, yes, Andrew. I'm still going to love you. Okay, God. There are young men in the church, pastors' sons, eldest sons, deacons' families, young men just like me, Lord, they are now in gangs. And I led them there. I said, God, are you, are you still going to love me, Lord? He says, yes. I said, God, okay, okay, okay. I said, God, you know, Lord, that if you didn't you know, save me, I probably wouldn't be here. I said, God, you know, you know, you are the one that God did not see me trying to chase after him, you know. It wasn't that God was walking away from me and I said, God, where are you going? Oh, save me. It was the other way around. I was running from God. Okay, church, I saw God chasing me and I was saying, get off me. Leave me alone. I want to be with the devil. And God says, Andrew, even when you did not want me, I chased you even harder. Even when you were doing those worldly things, when you were in the club, when you were drinking, when you were smoking, when you were selling things, when you were beating up people, when you were doing all manner of nastiness, God says, that is why I love you. Because you need a savior. God said, the reason why I love you so much, the Bible says that God is love. God loves us. No matter what you've done, and no matter where you've been, no matter where you are, even if right now, physically, you look like the worst sinner, the devil's going to send people to discourage you. But I'm saying in the name of Jesus, those people are not of God. Like it or not, they're not of God if you're discouraged to come to church holding your mind that that person discouraging you cannot be of Jesus Christ keep your eyes on Jesus because he died for you let anyone know when you're being discouraged all I say is this did you die for me? church did you die for me? when you get upset at my shouting or my me, me telling my story think about this was you there? When I was in my mess, when I was calling the church, and when I was calling my family, was you there? No, you wasn't. Jesus was there for me. That's why what I do is regardless of what any man may say. Because I've had an experience with Jesus Christ. Even though the Bible is saying it, the difference with my religion and my faith, unlike other religions, I'm being honest now, is that my religion, my Jesus, is not just someone that is written down in ink in the Bible. Do you know, my Jesus written down in ink is actually a person that's actually living right now, that's actually with me right now, that's actually said, you can't even live righteously. So guess what? My Jesus in the Bible, he said, I'm going to come down like you are, and I'm going to live like you can't live, and I'm going to show you how much I love you. I came down, and I lived your life. Your temptations, guess what? I've tasted them. Your addictions, guess what? I've tasted them. You can't stop being angry, guess what? I've been there. You can't forgive, guess what? I've forgiven. 
and God says now I've lived the life that you can't live I don't want you to believe in me why because I've died for you and I've lived the life you cannot live so guess what if you believe in me I will give you myself the Bible says Christ in you that is the aim Christ in you the hope of glory my appeal is simple I know time is gone but I'm making this appeal I'm making this appeal I said to Jesus I said Jesus I cannot go to church and warm the bench I can't do that can I tell you why the pull the pull of the world was way too strong for me I had over five men that could link me up with making money that would blow your mind I had females that were just waiting for me to make one mistake just one mistake I had gossiping outside the world and in the church saying do you know the things that Andrew used to do and I said God I know this is going to come my way so Lord I need you to do something in my life that's not just going to save me for good but keep me along the journey one week later young people when I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ I got a phone call from Stratford Church and they said that they wanted the speaker to come and talk to our young people I said I'm going to go don't worry I'm going to go and I went there the Lord did his thing but then I got a phone call church this was the hard one to my home church are you guys hearing me? you, you know you're not hearing me church to my home church the same church when I testified that I was a deacon in my church I was a deacon in my church wearing the deacon clothes giving out the offering I was like hey happy Sabbath man I got the phone call when I was being a deacon stolen car outside the car park yes my friend in the world Fuller I know you're in church but we got a stolen car church what do you think I did I dropped the basket went outside and drove the car why am I saying this because I was fake the devil was leading my life but I was just lying in church and it was only when I said to Jesus I said God if you're real save me I said God show me your love and when I sat down and I was shown that God died he died for me when I was at my worst Jesus said I took on your sin I who knew I don't even know sin imagine how far God is from sin Jesus said I love you so much I will actually put on your sin and then guess what I'm going to give you my righteousness I said no um, no church think about that what do I that's why the only drawing power to save everyone is love because you can't gainsay that there's nothing you can say against that you can't debate that you can't bring a theory to that how do you say that's wrong you are at your worst Jesus is perfect he says give me your sin and put on my righteousness that's why I'm a Christian today young people that's why I'm a Christian because somebody showed me love I saw that God is love and I'm not turning back because the church might forsake me everybody might show me that they don't love me but God is still love God is still love and that can never change no matter what you're going through God can never change the Bible says there is no shadow of turning with him he cannot change once he is love he will always be love my appeal is simple right now you're here today it's my first appeal you have walked with God in the past and you know right from wrong you know that there's a devil and there's a God and they're fighting for your mind 
The issue is the mind. Don't surrender your addictions. Your addictions is only a branch, but the root is the mind. So let this appeal be different today. I'm not appealing for you to come and give me your addictions. God does not do peaceful surrender. God does not deal with peaceful surrender. He deals with the mind and the heart. If you give me your mind and your heart, I, I can guarantee you a miracle takes place today. Right now. If you want the Lord to give you not just a new mind, but his mind. If you want to say in Psalms 51 verse 10, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a spirit within me. I'm going to ask you, wherever you are, to come to the front, even now, wherever you are, you're asking the Lord today for a new mind and to create in me a clean heart. Make your way to the front, even now, wherever you are. That's my first appeal. second appeal is very simple today you want to say to the Lord Jesus Christ you're a young person you're a young person today you're saying I want to resolve in my heart and my mind that I'm going to start living for Jesus Christ so not just I want to come to Christ but you want to resolve in your mind today that I want to start living for Jesus Christ. I want to actually see the power of God in my life. This, this is a whole different appeal now. So yes, you want a new mind and a new heart, but you're saying today, Lord, you know what, God? I'm hearing you're real. Well, no, 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 no. Lord, I want to see your power in my life. You're struggling with addictions. You're struggling with sin in your life. There's anger, malice, hatred, gossip. No matter where it is, when sin reigns in the mortal body, Jesus cannot be there. But you're saying today, Lord, I want you to show yourself strong through my life. Show to me in my life that day to day, you're with me. You're saying, Lord, I want you to show me who you are through my everyday living. As every headed body of your eyes closed, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand where you are if that's, if that's for you. Raise your hand where you are. I want you, Lord, to show me in my everyday life that you are real. Your word is real. I want you, Lord, to use my life as a testament that the word is real. And that's your prayer today, Lord. I want you to literally blow me away with the word being shown in my life. So when I go to school and college and the workplace, Lord, take the word and allow it to live in my life as a testament that God is real. Have you heard this bow church and have your eyes closed? Father God in heaven the love of God is not a mere subject many philosophers have tried to break it down and they try and teach it the intellectual way in schools and colleges and high minded universities Lord But Lord, remind us, Lord, your love that you have for us is beyond our knowing. It's beyond our measure. The only word to break it down, Lord, is simply infinite. Your love has no end. Your love has no beginning. We can't break it down. But one thing we do know, Lord, is that your love has the power to penetrate our hearts. 
And Lord, I can safely say that you have proven yourself today. Even if we did not understand the doctrine aspect of, of faith and grace and love, even if we did not understand every single iota of the sermon, even if we didn't really understand the stories, Lord, one thing that has not felt today is your love coming today and showing us that you love us. One thing that hasn't felt today, Lord, is the fact that people have responded to your love. They might not have all questions answered. They might not have all tables turned, Lord. They might not be even ready in their mind to make the deepest decisions. But, Lord, what they can say is safely, they have experienced your love today. Remind us, Lord. You're not like these hit and miss boyfriends and, and girlfriends that are here for a season. Remind us, Lord, that no matter what we're going through, you are with us and you're in it for the long run. Remind us, Lord, that you will never leave us or forsake us today. Remind us, Lord, that no matter what we have done, your grace is sufficient for us. Remind us, Lord, that where sin abound, grace much more abounded. And Lord, I want to thank you, Lord, for the lives of these youth. You know their personal struggles, Lord Jesus. You know their issues, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to fight for them, Lord. Please, Jesus, please. Fight for them. Send your angels down to work with them. And I pray, Lord, please, for those influential figures in the church, Lord, I'm praying for them especially. For the ones who are actually doing the work in this church. For the ones who are fighting for the salvation of our young people in this church. Lord, I'm praying for them, Lord. I'm asking you to protect them and guide them and lead them. Keep them strong, Lord. Keep them passionate about young people. For those that are not passionate, Lord, for those that don't really understand what's really going on in the warfare, Lord, remind them that you're not angry at them. You love them also, Lord. You're not willing that any should perish, Lord. So, Lord, I pray and beg of you, Lord, that you can wake them up, Lord. Please, I pray that this word has woken them up. Spur us into action. And when all is said and done, Lord Jesus, I pray that we can be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. For those who had an experience with Jesus today, said amen and amen.